Welcome to Kingston Springs United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are worshiping with us today. The order of worship for today's service can be found on our church Facebook page. It has the hymn lyrics on it so that you can sing along with us today if you would like to. Later in the service, we will be receiving Holy Communion, so you will want to have a piece of bread or cracker and juice or water ready for that if you would like to partake in that with us. As always, we will begin our service by lighting our candle together. So if you have a candle at home, you can light yours as I light mine. This candle is a symbol of God's presence with us. So wherever you are today, wherever you are worshiping, whatever kind of mood you are in, whatever stress or worry or joy or praise that you are bringing to worship today, wherever you are, whoever you are, God's Spirit is there with you. So I invite you to settle in, to ready your spirit and your hearts and your minds to receive what God would have for us today. And now let us join together in the call to worship and your responses will be printed on the screen. Come near to the Lord. Lord be with us this day. Lift your sorrows and joys to the Lord. Lord, hear the cries of our hearts. Come, rest in the love and mercy of God. Bless us, O Lord, that we may be blessings for others in your name. Amen.
as we move into a time of prayer, if you are worshiping with us on Facebook Live, feel free to type in your joys and concerns in the comment section. If there's anything that you would like to give thanks for or anything you would like for us to pray about, you can type those in the comments and we will pray for those this week. We have some concerns to lift up today. Hyleen will undergo surgery this week to remove the tumor, so please remember her this week. Remember the Dupre family, Betty's brother, um, Jamie's uncle, John Hicks, who has been on our church prayer list for several weeks now. He passed away last Thursday, so we need to um, remember their family in the weeks to come. Also, we need to remember all the people on the West Coast who are dealing with wildfire fires. Um, I know we have several family members in our congregation, um, several family members of people in our congregation who are on the West Coast who have had to evacuate or who um, may have to evacuate soon. So please remember all those on the West Coast and also those on the Gulf Coast who have experienced flooding from the hurricane last week. If there is any prayer concern that you would like added to our church prayer list, please email me that and let me know. We, I send out the prayer list in our weekly church email. Um, so if you would like to be added to our church email, please uh, email me and let me that, know that as well. As we pray today, I will lead us in a guided prayer where we will focus on particular people and situations at different points in the prayer. And after each section, I will pause for a few moments of silence for you to pray at home. And then I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then we will all respond, hear our prayer. So let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we thank you for the good gifts in our lives. Help us to see the good. Help us to see the good when it seems as though we are only surrounded by chaos and uncertainty. Help us to see the beauty of your creation, to give thanks for family and friends and for the love and support we receive from this church, from this community of faith. As we are mindful of all the good gifts that you give us, the gifts of your love and forgiveness we are also mindful of the ways that we have not shown love and forgiveness to others. So we confess today that we have failed to love you with our whole lives. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We ask for reconciliation and forgiveness in our own lives as we lift up our prayers of confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all those who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We lift up prayers for our church that we may be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. 
We lift up prayers for our nation and its leaders that they might seek the path of peace, justice, and well-being for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all the reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We lift up prayers for your creation in our stewardship of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. We lift up prayers for our family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are sick with COVID, those around the world who are in quarantine, those separated from their loved ones, those who have lost their source of income, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are facing surgery and procedures this week, for those who are undergoing cancer treatments, for those who have been affected by the wildfires on the West Coast and by the flooding on the Gulf Coast. Give all these your children courage and hope in their struggles. Bring them assurance of your presence with them and empower us to do what we can to help. We lift up prayers for those who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus our Lord. Amen. We began our prayer with confession, and I invite you to hear the pardon today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. now time for our children's message so we invite all the kids out there to gather around your screen for our story time together so our story for today we continue where we left off last week so last week if you remember the Israelites escaped Egypt and God parted the Red Sea so that the Israelites could walk through on dry ground to escape from the Egyptian army and Pharaoh who were chasing them. So now they have been walking for about a month since they left the Red Sea and they are in the desert. And the desert is hot and there's not a whole lot of plants in the desert. So there's not a lot of food 
and whatever food that those Israelites had with them is all gone by now. And they are hungry. They are really, really, really hungry. Have you ever been really, really hungry and you kind of get angry? It's called getting hangry. Well, the Israelites were hangry. They were hungry and they were angry. And they complained to Moses. They say, you brought us out here in the desert. There's no food. We are hungry. It would have been better if we just stayed in Egypt. At least we had food back in Egypt. And so God hears the Israelites complaining. And God provides for them. God gives them food. God makes quail, which are like birds. Well, they are birds. Um, show up in the evenings for them to eat meat. And then in the mornings, God provides bread, which they call manna. Um, it was kind of like this dewy stuff on the ground, um, this flaky, like like almost like dew, like if, if you go out in the morning and you see the wet grass, the dew on the grass, that's kind of what manna was. It was this flaky bread-like substance on the ground. In the, so every morning, manna appeared on the ground. It was bread. And so God gave the Israelites instructions. God says, go out every morning and collect enough bread for your family for that day. Just only collect enough bread for one day. On the sixth day of the week, you can get enough bread for two days so that you can rest on the seventh day a week of the week. So the Israelites were only supposed to gather enough bread for their family for one day. Can you think why God would ask them to do that? Can you guess why would God ask them to only get enough bread for one day? If you said so that everyone would have enough bread, you are right. They were only supposed to gather enough bread for their family for one day so that everybody would have enough bread for the day, right? So like if my family went out and gathered a ton of bread, so much bread that we couldn't eat it all to try and save it for the next day, there might not be enough bread for other families. So God gave them these instructions so that they would be a people who shared with other people and who looked out for other people, right? Who cared for other people. And God wants us to, to do the same. God wants us to be people who um, only take what we need, people who share what we have with others and make sure others have what they need. So um, even during this pandemic, when um, we might not think that we can do a whole lot or we might not feel like we have a whole lot to share, there are still things that we can do. Um, we can send money to uh, the church for our fuel ministry, with those bags that we send to Kingston Springs Elementary School to provide snacks for kids. Um, those are ways that we can provide actual food for people. And... Um, we can um, give food to the ark like we've done before, like in our food drive, and you can also keep doing that. Um, there are all, lots of ways that we can share what we have with others and be sure that others have what they need. So we are going to sing a song today, and um, we sang it before. It's been a while, but it's this little light of mine, and this is to remind us that we are to share light and love with other people. So, are you ready to sing with me? You sing it real loud, okay? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, good job. So let, we're going to pray now, and I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us what we need every day. Help us to look out for other people, to care for them, and to help them have what they need every day. We love you, and we thank you. Amen. Hear the scripture reading from Exodus 16, 
2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and every day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gathered on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard your complaining, that you utter against him, What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard that the complaining of the Israelites say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. You should know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Breathe on us the breath of life. Amen. When our country was officially required to social distance starting in March, toilet paper rapidly disappeared from store shelves. It was insane how quickly people snatched up toilet paper. When word got out that toilet paper was becoming scarce, it caused people to think that they needed to go out and buy tons of toilet paper because there might not be enough toilet paper for everyone. So people began to buy toilet paper in crazy amounts and everyone was buying it at once. And rather quickly, toilet paper was sold out everywhere. I mean, you could not find it at any store. You couldn't find it online. And I remember thinking at the time, it was crazy that people fixated on stocking up on toilet paper during a pandemic for a respiratory illness. But when I reflected more on it, I realized that the frantic buying up of toilet paper revealed a deeper reality. When people think that something is scarce, when there doesn't appear to be a lot of it, it will stir up within us fear 
that we won't have what we need to survive. And apparently we can't survive without toilet paper. So we will hoard items so that we and our families will have enough. Now behind this frantic buying up of toilet paper is a scarcity mindset that leads us to store up items for ourselves without regard for anyone else. And if people hadn't hoarded toilet paper in those first few weeks of social distancing, there wouldn't have been a scarcity of toilet paper and everyone would have had enough. The Israelites know firsthand about a scarcity mindset. They experienced it while they were slaves in Egypt. Even though there was an actual abundance of resources in Egypt, there was enough for everyone to have food to eat. There was enough wealth to spread to everyone. Even though there was enough resources, there was an abundance of resources, Pharaoh and the economy he built actually operated on a scarcity mindset where there was a notion that there wasn't enough for everyone. So people at the top of the economic ladder hoarded as much power, wealth, and resources that they could. And because Pharaoh operated as if these things were scarce, he hoarded for himself with a dis destructive disregard for the well-being of others. In fact, this scarcity mindset, fueled by a greed for power, led him to enslave the Israelite people for fear that they would take power from him. In Pharaoh's mind, there was a limited amount of power and he wanted all of it. He used the Israelites to build an empire where he could hoard more and more for himself. Under this economy that was built on scarcity and fear, the Israelites suffered greatly. They were enslaved for 400 years in this kind of economy. In an economy built on scarcity and fear, it's the vulnerable who suffer the most. People who live at or below the poverty line are barely scraping by working, some of them working two and three jobs just to make ends meet every month, while those at the top of the economic ladder hoard resources and power with little of those resources and attention getting funneled down to those at the bottom. In an economy of scarcity, People from different countries, different ethnicities, different religions are seen as threats to our own safety, security, and privilege. And they are the ones who are treated terribly because we don't want them taking what's ours. We don't want them taking our slice of the small pie. This scarcity mindset is what fed into the greed for power and wealth that drove the slave trade that began in our country in the 17th century, where white people enslaved Africans for hundreds of years and then continued to oppress them after slavery was officially over. As we have seen over the past two weeks, God freed the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt by leading them out during the night and parting the Red Sea so they could walk through it on dry ground. After crossing the Red Sea, they spend time at the oasis of Elam before they set out on their journey to the land that God has promised to give them. So now it's been about a month since they have left Egypt and there's an actual scarcity of resources here in the desert. The desert doesn't produce food for them to eat, and what little food they have brought with them has run out. So they complain to Moses. They say, 
Why have you brought us out into the wilderness to die of hunger? It would have been better if we would have died in Egypt. At least then our bellies would have been full of food. Now, before we start to judge their complaints, it doesn't seem too far off from our own complaints. When we head out into an unknown future and hit a difficult time, we often romanticize the past and long for the good old days, even though those good old days weren't actually all that good when we first experienced them. For the Israelites, they experienced horrific brutality at the hands of the Egyptians. They were forced to do hard labor without any pay. They were beaten. They lived on whatever the Egyptians chose to give them, which wasn't that much. So even though there was an abundance of food, of e abundance of food in Egypt, there wasn't an actual abundance of food for the Israelites. But now the Israelites long, they look back on those horrendous conditions with a longing to go back. It's really difficult to learn a new way of being in the world when all they've known is an economy built on scarcity and fear. So they complain to Moses. God hears their complaints and responds by providing food for them in the desert. God provides quail in the evenings and bread that they call manna in the mornings. In the midst of real scarcity, God provides what the people need. And God lays down some instructions. The people are only to gather enough bread for that day. On the sixth day of the week, they can gather enough for two days so that they can rest on the seventh day. These instructions are put into place to ensure that everyone would have enough bread for the day. If 10 families are out there gathering as much bread as they can to stock up for themselves, there's a good chance there might not be enough bread for every family that day. In this way, God is giving them a new identity. God is forming them into a community of generosity, faith, and equality, as opposed to an economy of scarcity, fear, and exploitation that they knew in Egypt. God is shaping them from a people enslaved to an economy of hoarding to a people who are free to live in equitable community of abundance where everyone has enough. They are to be a community, a community that lives in the mindset of abundance rather than a mindset of scarcity. Even when they experience times of crisis, when they are surrounded by signs of scarcity in the wilderness. Just as God was forming the Israelites into a community liberated from a mindset of scarcity, so too is God forming us into a community that lives out of a mindset of abundance. As we are walking in the wilderness of a pandemic, People who live out of an abundance mindset ask the question, what can we give up or stop hoarding so that others can have what they need to survive? As we are surrounded by an economy that is built on a scarcity mindset of fear, people who live out of an abundance mindset ask the question, how can we use our resources to make sure impoverished communities have access to good education, food, and health care? As we are living in a society that is built upon racist policies where power is hoarded by one race, people who live out of an abundance mindset ask the question, how can we use our voices 
our time, energy, and resources to make sure people who are oppressed and discriminated against have access to the same rights and privileges that we do. As we are facing the consequences of unbridled consumption of the earth's resources, people who live out of an abundance mindset ask the question, how can we curb what resources we use and the pollution that we produce so that the next generation has a healthy planet to live on? As we continue to walk in the wilderness, surrounded by signs of both real and manufactured scarcity, God wants to form us into a people who trust God to provide our daily needs and who are mindful of the well-being of others. God is forming us into a people who pray for God to give us this day our daily bread so that others can have their daily bread as well. Amen. We have the opportunity now to respond to God's gift of grace by the giving of our tithes and offerings. When we give, it is an act of worship where we recognize that all that we have and all that we are is a gift from God. Just as God has generously given to us, we then generously give back. So you can send your check in the mail to our church at 368 North Main Street, Kingston Springs, 37082. Or you can give online at ksumc.churchcenter.com slash giving. If you would like to donate to our fuel bag ministry, please mark on your check and on your online giving fuel ministry. And those funds will go to provide snacks for children in need at Kingston Springs Elementary School. I will pray over the offering. And then we will continue to worship as Mary leads us in the hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. Let us pray. Giving God, we thank you for these good gifts that you have given to us and we now give back to you. Bless them, multiply them, and use them for your work in the world. As we give of our time, talent, and resources, shape us to be a people of generosity and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
now time for Holy Communion, so you will want to have your communion elements ready. And I invite you to join with me in the Liturgy for Holy Communion. Though physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as family through God's Spirit. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather from across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now our shared eating. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When we came to the Red Sea, you provided a way through it. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When hunger came, you provided manna from heaven. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remains steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you or from each other. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And everyone says, Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. This cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled again. These are the gifts of God for anyone who wants to receive God's grace. And we all say, thanks be to God. And now I invite you to receive Holy Communion by whatever means that you have. Let us pray. Day after day after day, you give yourself to us in two or three gathered in your name, in connection across the miles and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now you can finish eating or drinking your communion elements, or you can pour them out outside and give them back to God's creation. As we continue to walk in the wilderness, surrounded by signs of scarcity, walk forward in the Spirit, who is forming us into a people of an abundance of generosity, faith, and love. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <laughs>